It's been a while since I did an update, at least in video form, on Maelstrom, and realistically I haven't used the mailing list that's been developed from the pre-pre-orders because I don't want to abuse it and I don't want to spam people. But we're hitting a point now where, except for the, the beta users who have gotten some feedback, and even that has stopped to an extent, with the exception of a, a small firmware tweak to fix a bug. Titan Lab is primarily funded by my own wallet, and my wallet is funded by being a consultant to the industry, so working on projects, designs, or just generally giving specific advice, especially for sports technology, but for all sorts of things, including uh, strain gauge, load cell development, and the like. And I've been fortunate in this last year um, to be able to keep putting money towards Maelstrom behind the scenes in order to try and figure out how to bring it to the mass. And the goal has always been one unit for most of the world and, you know, try and do everything legitimately, try and do everything correctly. And it's just, it's culminated to a point where basically the quotations I have for trying to certify this in multiple countries don't have a guarantee that they will be able to get it through. Basically, I've been told the regulations are old, no one certifies to it, and we suspect that both UL, CSA, and ETL will do their best not to allow this product to be certified. What's happened in the last 30 years since those regulations were basically written without update for UL and CSA is that fan motors got cheap. They got really cheap. The shaded pole motors and fans got so cheap and then they just add a second tap to another part of the winding and that's it. That's why you get the clunky knobs. And there are so many regulations along the way for a simple device that can control them I haven't actually been able to find anything that's actually certified. I've, so I found a lot of products that originate in China, no certification. However, I can't find one product that is certified. And in fact, the only products that incorporate the Triac dimmer are specifically for incandescent and LEDs that are dimmable. That basically leaves me with country by country certifications that each one are exceedingly expensive, possible individual SKUs for each country potentially, and no guarantee for any certification whatsoever. That adds up to a lot. So originally I promised that I would make this project open source and that's what we're hitting now is that I do not believe that I could truly raise the the money either through kickstarters or outside investment at this current point in order to fund the maelstrom fan controller so everything is being pushed to the github repository in fact any of the beta users if you open this it basically tells you the pinout for everything on it it was one of the kind of hacker features that i included in it also it has a small picture of an elephant um, in case you're interested. <laughs> let's talk a little bit about the firmware and the hardware. Actually, let's talk about the hardware first. So throughout the whole learning and talking to consultants and basically getting rejected over and over again, um, I learned of the proper regulations and then I started going through them. Most everything is met. The one thing that I would really like to do is add a, um, error gap mechanism. So that basically implies a mechanical switch. In the current plastic housing design, there's not really any room uh, without adding uh, a separate switch somewhere and there's no room inside really. So yeah, that, that it would physically have to get a bit larger or the jacks would have to go away if, the, if someone wanted to make an exact design of it. If you wanted to add that point, I haven't had an issue and they shipped with very low, I think, 3 amp fuses. So that was also part of the regulations. Basically, don't use anything more than a 3 amp fuse and a whole bunch of stuff that it seems to meet on, like if you short, if it does this, yeah. The design actually uses a, theoretically, a UL sort of pre-certified 
um, AC to DC power supply. It's exceedingly uncommon for almost any of these electronics to use that. They normally use cheap capacitive dropper circuits. So I kind of went on the high end here. So, you know, if you do want to build something, you're going to have to find your own three volt supply or buy one of these regulators. They're not too expensive, but they're um, more common in China. So I, they are a Chinese DC to DC, fully electrically isolated power reg. In terms of firmware though, basically it's gotten to the point where I like it, but the only real flaw from a user perspective is the intervals. Um, I kept talking about how I'd have a, I wanted to have a mode where if you went to a certain threshold and you come back down, it would actually slowly taper down. So it would try and cool you just after the, the threshold. Um, never happened. Uh, I did play with a couple ideas and tried to implement things and I didn't get it working the way I want it. The one person who caused the, the flash memory not, not cleaning itself up bug had been switching it back and forth between uh, his running foot pod and uh, his bike. And I had not even really thought so much about the treadmill stuff until after I actually built it. So there's lots of room here for, for potential market growth um, and lots of different potential ideas. So hopefully someone will come along and rather than, you know, wiring in relays to their, their existing fan and stuff like that, someone will actually look at and contribute to the GitHub. So, you know, if someone wants to push to it, um, I will review it. Uh, in fact, I've been thinking about this as an aspect of as Titan Lab grows, we've been having part-time involvement with the company for different projects, but things are pushing ahead and uh, looking at maybe keeping it on as um, a task for, for a junior developmental engineer um, or an engineering student in the future. So that's something I'm looking at, but not probably going to happen within the next few months and maybe in 2021. Thanks for watching. This has been um, a very long and interesting and expensive road. And part of the reason I was silent for all these, these months on things is there have been, well, there's been consulting that I've been doing, some projects that have been extremely tight in timelines, but also we're going to be launching something and we've gone further with it. We've gone further than we have with Maelstrom. We have injection molded tools. And if you know anything about product, that it's the last thing. Um, not ready to say what it is yet, but suffice to say that it is really cool. It's multifunction. It has huge potential for expandability and new feature sets to be added. And the buttons thing, like my whole buttons video stuff, suffice to say I did not spend a thousand dollars trying to figure out buttons for not a good reason. So it's actually super exciting because I really believe that this is going to make your indoor and outdoor riding experience so much more enjoyable, more fluid, more natural. So with that, um, thanks for watching. Uh, like and subscribe. I know everyone says it, but um, it actually really helps the visibility of the channel.